It's time for Nip Talk. And I picked a topic that I think is a lot more complex than people realize. In fact, when I went from general surgery to plastic surgery, it was something that I didn't realize how broad it was, and that's breast lifts. Um, you know, you think of breast lifts, if you're, if you're not, you know, a plastic surgeon, you think, oh, you're just like, you know, I don't know, lifting the breast up. But there is a huge amount of variation to it. And so uh, I feel like when patients come in to see me that a lot of times they, they don't know about that. And so I want to just take a few minutes and talk about some Absolutely. of the things about mastopexy, which is the doctor word for breast lift. And, and start by talking about, like, what exactly should a breast lift accomplish? And so there's a few things because not every patient has every issue, right? You know, it's almost like when you see a patient that has some sagging of their breasts, you, you tailor that surgery specifically for them. Yes. So one of the things it could do is, is to lift the nipple areola complex, so, right? Like, so maybe after you have kids, the nipple falls a little bit. And so you want to get that thing back in the proper position because when it's too low, it, it makes you look more aged, right? Absolutely. So that's one yes. thing. The other yes. thing that can happen is you get sagging to your breast tissue. So not just the nipples out of position, but the whole breast is out of position. So breast lift can also fix that. And then the last couple of things would be just to fix the overall shape, you know, because the shape does tend to kind of get away from you when you start to sag. And also you want to have that fullness in your breast because women like to have those full breasts so that when they wear their clothes, Everything looks appropriate. Or a bikini they, top. You're right, a bathing back suit. Where yeah, you exactly should be, right. and all the things are right. Yes. So, so those are the things that a breast lift, you know, would hope to accomplish based on what the issues are. And so, here's where it gets complex because there's a lot of different versions. So, I'm kind of going to go through them. We can talk about them, and if you know anything about them, you know, please chime Absolutely. in. So, the first one that I would talk about is the simplest, and that's what we call a peri areolar breast lift. And so with this breast lift, it is the simplest one. It's basically just repositioning the nipple areola complex on the breast. And so when I say it's simple, I mean it really only is removing skin around the areola and then suturing that to the border of the areola. So it's very nice when you can do something that simple to help people, but it does have kind of a very limited effect. It doesn't really affect the shape of the bottom of the breast. It doesn't help the breast tissue. And so, you know, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that the patient really that's that's all they need. Right. So so moving up the list would, would be what I would call a skin only lift. And so a skin only lift is similar to a periareolar, but it also does involve the skin at the base of the breast. So how a patient would be differentiated is think of like periareolar of like someone who just barely has a little bit of like drop of their nipple versus someone that needs a, peri, uh, a skin only lift would have not just a nipple out of position, but also the breast itself. It's starting to fall, right? right. It's going south. Yes. Now, the difference between a skin only lift and the next one, which is a glandular lift, is the skin only lift only involves removing skin. And so why you would use that is when any time that there are implants involved. And this is where it gets complex. And, I, and when I explain this even to doctors, so they're like, wait, wait what? what? Yeah, right, yeah. Because I'm sure you're probably like, okay, this kind of makes sense, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, right. you probably know a little bit about this, right? Yes, yep. yeah, but to somebody just walking in wanting that procedure done, it's like there's... Right, yeah, I have to like draw it there's out. There's so much right. I, I don't know. Right, exactly. I, I just want them up and here. And they don't even know what they need. Know. Yeah. Exactly. So with exactly. the with the periareolar, that is a lift that you would use when either you are putting in or removing implants. And the reason for that is when you have a implant behind the breast, it does devascularize or take away some of the blood supply to that breast tissue. And yes. if you were then to go and cut the breast tissue on the inside, you could end up in a scenario where you've removed too much blood supply and you end up for things either not healing or even tissue dying. So when someone either has implants, want put in or taken out, the lift that we would do if they, they needed that would be a skin only. We're just removing the skin, that's too much, when we're reshaping the breast over an implant yes. or over a place where we've taken out an implant. And you compare that to a glandular lift. So a glandular lift would be if somebody had maybe a lot of breast tissue where they don't want an implant and, it, and their breast tissue is just sagged. And in that instance, what you're doing is you're, you're taking away the skin you don't need, and you're also going into the breast and literally moving the tissue into yeah, the so proper it's a little position. bit deeper, a little bit Definitely more Definitely deeper. Yeah, and that's why when you have an implant, you can't do that one. Because you, you, I mean, I personally would never do it. I don't think there's any surgeons out there doing it. It just is too stressful and it's too risky, in my opinion, to do that. I, I would be very nervous if somebody said they were trying that. Um, right. But yeah, if you're going to do a glandular, really implants can't either be putting in or taking out. But it does accomplish a lot. You know, the one downside yes, of the skin-only lift is that the only thing holding the lift up is the 
is the tightening of the skin. Is the skin. When you move that breast tissue, it gives it a lot more longevity because you're actually suturing the tissue into where it belongs, and then you're getting the fullness with your own tissue. Yes. So, um, yeah, I get a lot of patients that come in and they think, well, I think I need to lift, and then we have to go through the conversation of, do you want implants, you know, or are you happy with your breast size? And it becomes a very little uh, complex, you know, conversation yeah. that. So, how that, many times do you think you have a patient that's like, I, I, I just don't know. I need to, you know, I know you suggest to them like, I, I feel like you can do skin only, or right. maybe you, you know, you've got to go all the way to glandular, but. You know, do they waffle over that a no, lot? No, I like, mean, I say this all the time that, you know, as a plastic surgeon, you know, my job is to learn what the patient wants when they get to the other side. And, and oftentimes they have a hard time expressing it. We have to kind of like dig into it. And then giving them the ways that we can accomplish that goal. And, yeah. and sometimes, you know, there might be multiple options, you know, but normally I can say, okay, in my opinion, this is probably your best bet. And because the patients are, I mean, I don't want to say they're lost because, you know, some of them are educated, but like of we course, are talking yeah. about complex topics. Yes. Normally they do kind of take, you know, my advice into account. So As they should. The last As thing I did should. want to mention, uh, because this is very important, and uh, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that, there are a couple of variations of how each of these lifts are done involving the incision patterns. And so what, we, what I mean by that, and I, I threw up some pictures. Uh, Travis, can we go to the, uh, these pictures? So the first one I showed is this is the incision pattern for a periareolar or lift. Uh, you see the shape of the breast there. And then the red part would be the incision around it. So that's the yes. simplest one. You know, the scar hides very well along yes. the areola border. Most of the time you yes. can't even see it once it's fully healed. Now throw up the next one, Travis. I, I, I think there's two more. Yeah. So this is the classic version of either skin only or glandular lift. We call this a wise or anchor pattern. That's what I was about to say. Maybe anchor. Yep. It looks like an anchor, right? So you see that the red yes. the red line goes around the areola. Then there's a drop down to the bottom, and then there's a red line all the way across the bottom. That is the classic lift pattern that has been done for decades. And when I trained in plastic surgery, that was what I was taught to do. But when I went that and did a fellowship. Kid. Specific to breast, I was taught a better way. So, Travis, throw up the last one. So, this would be a classic short scar lift. Now, there's a couple versions. There's circumvertical, which is this, and vertical, which is almost identical. And I'm not going to get too confusing because they're almost all the same. But the circumvertical, you have an incision around the areola. Then you have the drop down that kind of just barely kind of hooks to the outside, and then that's it. There's no big scar along the bottom. And so I am a firm believer that if you're going to get a lift, that you should find a surgeon that does the short scar. Not only is it less scar, but one of the absolute biggest complications with breast lift is healing problems when you have that big incision at the bottom. Yes. And if you can yes. do the short scar, then you eliminate almost all of that risk of healing problems. I mean, I, I, do, I do those short scar lifts literally all the time. I almost never have people have healing problems with it. And if you're doing the old school way, it's like you have yes. a constant stream of people. And it, it seems to be where that incision meets right yeah. here. And, and there's a reason for that. Anytime you have a T incision, so the blood flow is limited by In the so incision. In so many areas, yeah. yes. And that's why it has problems healing at that yeah. point. And if you... Yeah. Look at the complication of breast lift. You, if you, you know, get on Google and you know, say what are the complications? Because they healing problems. You're going to see wounds. Yes, so. absolutely. And and your version heals. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful the way that it heals. Yeah, it does heal nice. And I knowing how to do both ways, I only do the short scar. I, I haven't done one of those those wise patterns in since like 2009. Would you ever have to do an anchor though with someone that is just? has a ton of breath tissue so and there's people no always, way around it, it. It's funny that you mention that because people always say that you can't do a short scar with either, either a very saggy or a very large breast. Mm -hmm. and for large breasts, you'd be doing you know more of a reduction maybe, but they're, they're very similar operations. So the, the scar right, the right, scar comment right. applies to both. I've done, I've done breasts that where I've taken off 3,000 grams of tissue through a short scar. Like that's that literally, lot. that's a massive amount. because. You know, that's a enorm that's a breast like this yes. that you're reshaping to that. Yes. Um, and and now, granted, I've done hundreds of these, so they are a little bit of complex surgery. If you just try to read about them and go do them, you're probably going to get in trouble. You kind of have to train with someone. But I, I don't have to change up my pattern based on size. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. That's it amazing. is nice. So if you're going to yes. get a breast lift, people, you don't have to come to me, but I would encourage you to seek out somebody who does a short scar because I think they're better. So. Yes. And okay. I can tell you, he actually did my lift. Uh, I didn't want to mention that. <laughs> I know. He's, he's awesome because he's, he's very private about Thanks. things, which is yep. always appreciated. But 
Um, I had an implant exchange and he also did a lift on me and put new implants yep. in. And, and I actually had forgotten about that when, he when we did, were talking about that just, voice. Would, I was like, wait, how, how are you? You would think, how do you, how do you It's forget, been years, How though. do you forget these? But he forgot, which is totally fine. You I'm, want me to I'm forget. Okay you don't want me to run around like exactly. thinking how do you I remember those. Yeah. I'd rather you remember my face. <laughs> but yeah, funny, yeah funny. He, he did an absolutely amazing oh, you're very job. Nice. Very it nice. healed beautifully. Um, right, yeah, he didn't have And you know what's funny is when you have something like this done and you're a nurse, your patients are automatically always like, can can I see him? Can I, do you mind if I see him? And it's always kind of a little bit of an awkward situation. Like, I don't know, maybe it's let, me, funny. let me pull the curtain and, you know, we, we can check them out together. I mean, I've had people you know, say, say stuff like so that. Great. And some people are like, yeah, I show them all the time. And other people are like, nope. <laughs> I, don't I do show. I did do show you your really? work. Oh my yes, gosh. Yes, wow. I would show your work. Wow, yes. Very nice. <laughs>